Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's sixth grade science updates. Uh, so by now, you're probably familiar with this. This is the way your kids access science. And I'm showing kids, especially I'm going to review it this morning at our 845 Zoom meeting, that when they see a green dot here on messaging, that means they have messages from me. Usually there's a class announcement every morning with our random event. It's a fun way for me to start their day um, and the attendance link. And then I've got information that everyone needs to know. But if they get a green dot here with my face on it, uh, this is the way that they get uh, messages from me just to your child. And this is how a lot of kids ask me for help. And a lot of times uh, I can help them right here before they need to ask me to do a Google Meet. But I've been doing that with kids who need extra help and for whom this is just not enough. Uh, but if you're watching this video, that's good. That means you clicked here on my Blooms update every Monday morning at 8. Uh, and if you're clicking on the second link here, you're getting uh, details about what assignments are due this week. And I put here the ones that kids should have finished last week. Uh, I messaged every kid what assignments I wanted them to focus on. So each kid knows that these assignments were the ones specifically for all five days last week. And then these are the ones we're going to work on uh, this week. Um, and, and I did fix the link. I noticed last week my link to the daily schedule didn't work. Hopefully you saw it uh, on your kid's Google Classroom for Science. Um, but this is the schedule we want them to follow, even on Wednesdays when we don't have our morning and afternoon Zooms. Uh, so kids should be going to the morning Zooms at 845, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then at 1.30 again, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday, they can just pop into Ms. Berger's, Ms. Berg's or Mr. Brennan's office hours or schedule a meet with me if they need help. Otherwise, they should just work all day. One thing I want to make sure you're also checking is when you click here, down here on your child, uh, this is where you find out if your child's keeping up with their work. So things here that you can see, let me find one that has this one. Yeah, so this one, uh, I'm trying to do this on Fridays now. So Fridays in the afternoon, once I collate how much work kids have done and everything, I will let you know. And these are the ones you don't want to see. You don't want to see that they're not following my directions, that they're not participating either with their work or with our Zooms. And no homework means they're just not turning in any work. These are the ones you want to see. They're turning in homework, they're on task, and they're participating on our Zooms. Uh, so you can look back here and see what they've got throughout the entire year. I've kept this up for every single kid. So you as the parent can have information to go, hey, let me help you with this because I see you're either not turning in work or not participating. And as the parent, maybe that's all you need to do is just make sure they're tuning into our Zooms and asking us for help. Uh, we don't expect you to come home from a full day of work and then teach your kid. We can do that, but we need to know that the kids need help. And one sign I get that kids need help is they're not doing their work, either because they don't want to and they're having more fun playing games or going outside and playing, or they're struggling. And how we help is a big difference. I can help struggling kids with their work, but kids who don't want to work and are just spending their time playing games, that's much harder to help. That one we need you to deal with uh, by getting your kids on the computer doing their work. And lastly, I do want to mention a couple of the new assignments we have this week. In case you see your kids playing games, it might be OK. So this week is the Hour of Code week. Uh, and typically, teachers do an Hour of Code where kids can play games that are all about learning code programming. This year, I'm trying something new. I'm using a Minecraft uh, world where kids can learn to code by helping solve a problem between two villages. Now, this is great if your kid got Minecraft Education Edition installed by me. If they didn't, 
then they've got to use uh, the hour of code. This one too is learning to code with Fortnite. I got a lot of kids who tell me, oh, we love Fortnite, we play it all the time. So I wanna leverage that for some coding for this hour of code. So if you see your kid playing Fortnite, uh, they're probably working on an hour of code. So I just wanted to tell you that so you don't think, oh no, my kid's off task and playing games. Um, for this instance, it could be okay. So check with me to make sure they're actually doing it for an hour of code. And it's called an hour. So in all of the whole week, they really should be spending at the minimum an hour, but not much more so they don't fall behind on their other work. Another assignment uh, that we unveiled just this past uh, Friday was the passion project that we are having kids work on Fridays. Only Fridays and only for part of their day. This is where kids can make a project out of what they love to do. We want to leverage your kids' passions and have it count as schoolwork. So kids are filling out a project planning sheet where they can turn what they love to do into a, a showcase of their passions and maybe even teach others how to do what they love to do. So those are the new things for this week along with their regular work and it's all listed here. Um, so if you have any questions, message me on Blooms or email me and I'll uh, help you out. All right, have a great week and I'll see you next Monday.